and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Hail Mary. God is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, granted by the same Spirit, we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lady Fatima, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. This is not a, a formally programmed class, but I'd like to just go through what we've gone through the past couple weeks in our catechism class. So I'm just going to be giving you a summary of what we've done in the past couple of weeks and then we'll be seeing you on Monday for our catechism class at 1245. So I'm just going to be going through it quickly. We've already had 18 lessons. Each lesson is about 15 minutes. So I'd like to just go through what we've learned the past two weeks and a half. First class was on prayer. Prayer is very important. What is prayer? Prayer is listening to God. Prayer is talking to God. And prayer is loving God. Second class is acts of mercy. The greatest attribute of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is that of his mercy. We celebrated six days ago Divine Mercy Sunday. Third class was loving sacrifices. How can we live out mercy? The Diary of St. Faustina Jesus says that we should try to practice an act of mercy every day. And there are three ways that we can do that. You can practice mercy by praying for someone. You say Hail Mary for someone with a lot of love, that's already an act of mercy. Or it could be words of mercy. Say a word that will encourage someone. A word of kindness, a word to pick up someone, or it could be an act of mercy. Carry out some type of errand for someone. Then we had a class, our, four, our fourth lesson was on the Our Father. This is the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us. There are two different words. On one occasion someone says, Lord, teach us how to pray as John the Baptist taught his disciples. And from that question, rather invitation Jesus gave us what's called the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. And that can be divided into seven different petitions. Then our fifth lesson was the Hail Mary. It's a prayer that Mary loves most. She loves it when we say the Hail Mary. Here's a question for you. Is there a prayer that Mary loves even more than the Hail Mary? It's kind of a quickie question, a tricky question. But there's a prayer that Mary loves even more than the Hail Mary. It's a string of Hail Marys. We call this the Rosary. 
So we pray the rosary, the Hail Mary, 50 times. Then we had a talk, a lesson on God. Non-believers are called atheists. Those who believe are called theists, believe that God exists. Then the seventh lesson is was a lesson on who is God and God is present in the Blessed Trinity. Trinity is a sublime mystery of our Catholic faith. A mystery does not contradict reason, but it goes beyond reason. It transcends reason. Trinity, we believe in one God in three persons. And those three persons are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So every time you make the sign of the cross, you're professing your belief in the Trinity. That's why you should make the sign of the cross with a lot of reverence in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then, our eighth lesson was on creation and the existence of angels. All of you have a guardian angel. What's the purpose of your guardian angel? We pray it, dear angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here. Ever this day be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. It's a prayer, but it's a catechesis, that prayer. That prayer teaches us that our garden angel's purpose is to help us to get to heaven. Maybe you saw that painting of a cloud walking across a bridge. There's a plank that's missing. There's, a, there's water rushing below. You see the garden angel with his wings that are protecting that child so that he won't fall through the plank and drown in the rushing waves. Then we talk about the creation of man and woman. God created a man to be a man and a woman to be a woman. And those first two people that God created were Adam and Eve. God created Adam and Eve in his image and likeness. In the following class, this was the tenth lesson, was a lesson on original sin. So God loved Adam and Eve. But he had to put Adam and Eve to the test. Because love is manifested only when we have freedom free will so we have a test either we can use our freedom to praise and glorify god and secure our salvation or we can abuse our freedom and we could pave our way to destruction god respects our freedom he respects our liberty None of us are robots. We're free creatures. And we're called to praise God. Then, the 11th lesson, we move from original sin to our sins. Our sins are called actual sins. These actual sins we commit can be divided into two categories, mortal sin and venial sin. Mortal sin is when we lose God's friendship by committing a serious sin. A mortal sin has three conditions. One, grave matter. Number two, full knowledge. Number three, full consent of the will. That constitutes a mortal sin. Then you have a venial sin. If you're lacking one of those conditions, it's not grave matter or done with full knowledge or full will, then that 
could constitute what is called a venial sin. Then we had a class on preparation for the coming of the Savior and his Blessed Mother. In that class, we spoke about the many prophecies in the Old Testament about the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'll give you one of those. It's taken from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14. Behold, a virgin will conceive a child, and the child will be born, and his name will be Emmanuel, which means God is with us. That prophecy was hundreds of years before Jesus came into the world. And that lesson mentioned many, many prophecies of the Old Testament, which were prophetically announcing Jesus Christ when he would come, even how he would die. For example, Psalm 22. This would go through I God that was in Psalm 22 and then Jesus actually said those words from the cross Eloi Sabachthani in Jesus's Aramaic language then we had a class on the Son of God made man that's basically Christmas Jesus became man. He became one of them. As St. Paul says, Jesus was like all of us, except one thing. The only thing that Jesus did not share with us is that Jesus never committed a sin, whereas we commit a lot of sins. But Jesus came to save us from our sins. And that takes us to the next class. The next class, or 14th lesson, was Jesus' redemptive death and resurrection. That's called the Paschal Mystery. The Paschal Mystery is the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what we we're celebrating 15 days ago. 15 days ago was Good Friday and then 14 days ago was Holy Saturday and 13 days ago would be the celebration of Easter. When Jesus died on Good Friday, he was buried, and three days later, he rose from the dead. That's called Easter. Okay, then the next lesson we had, is we spoke about the Holy Spirit and the doctrine of grace. The Holy Spirit is the third person of Blessed Trinity. The God, the Father, loves the Son, and the Son loves the Father. And the mutual love between the Father and the Son is the Holy Spirit. Then we spoke about the church. Jesus said, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world which is part of the Mass today in honor of St. Mark. If Jesus ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of God, other than where is he? He's present in his mystical body, which is the church. You are the stones of the church, as St. Peter says. And the fullness of the truth is found in the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church has four marks. We say this in the Mass on Sunday when we pray the Nicene Creed or the, the Apostles' Creed, which is the Catholic Church is one holy Catholic and apostolic. Then you had a class, a lesson on Christian unity. It's called the ecumenical movement in which there are efforts to try to unite different religions, to find points in common in which there can be an open dialogue. Not to water down our faith, but to see points of commonality that we can share with other religions so that one day we'll be one body in Christ. 
And then my last class, which I had yesterday, which I thoroughly enjoyed, I spoke five minutes about the Bible. The Bible is the Word of God. And we suggest that all of you, you should, all of you should have your own Bible. And the very heart of the Bible is the New Testament in which you find the Gospels. The Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Today we celebrate the feast day of St. Mark, one of the four evangelists. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And like the Blessed Virgin Mary, you're called to read the Bible, to get to know the Bible, and to put in practice the Bible. That's why Mary's our model. It says that Mary, for her part, she pondered, she meditated upon the Word of God. So in these 15 minutes, my friends, I've gone through the 18 lessons that we've had. It was an unprepared class, but I've given you a summary of what we've been learning over the past two weeks and a half. So we'll see you on Monday. Invite your children, invite your teenagers to come to the catechism class, which we have every day with Father Broom, at 1245 to 1 o'clock. So I'll give you my blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless all of you.